Hey everybody, Zach from Primrose Productions Music here. Today we are building a pedal board. Uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Got some pedals, got a board I gotta attach them to. Let's jump right into it. Alright, so we got everything laid out here. Here's our new Gator pedal board. Uh, let's get ready to put this thing together. So we're putting four pedals on it. That's about all that'll fit on it. It's a really small pedal board. I uh, didn't want any more than four pedals on it, so works out well. We got a TC Electronic Sky Surfer Reverb, TC Electronic Profit Digital Delay, a Maxon OD808, and a Polytune 3. Uh, then we got cables, power supply, and what they call hook and loop, which is definitely not Velcro, okay? It's not, it's not Velcro. It's hook and loop, okay? Don't get them confused. Anyway, so I think the first thing we are going to do here is... Actually, no, because these screws that help you attach the power supply kind of are loose. I'm going to attach the power supply first, just so that solves that problem. So, basically it has this little thing under it. It's just a couple of screws and a bar. You just tuck your power supply under, and then you're going to tighten it down. So... Yeah, really straightforward. So let's just tighten this bad boy down. Make sure it's like real snug in there. You don't want it flying around. Yeah, this will work for pretty much any size power supply. Although seeing as you can only fit about four pedals on here, you might be able to get more with some mini pedals, but if you're using regular size pedals, you can only really fit about four on here. So you probably won't need a bigger power supply, but you could fit a bigger one if you needed to for whatever reason. Yeah, that's in there. That's really tight, so... Alright, let's flip this baby over. Alright, so we need to attach some of this hook and loop here and here. You don't want to cover these holes if you can avoid it, because that's where all your cables are going to be routed. So, yeah. First thing we're going to do, uh, a wet cloth would do this, a wet paper towel would do this, uh, but I happen to just have Lysol wipes out here, so we're just going to wipe down those two spaces, just to make sure they're totally devoid of any little debris, any fuzz, anything, because if there's any little particles on there, then this stuff isn't going to stick as well, so... I just want to give it a quick wipe down. Right, now we're going to let that dry for a minute. And it's still a little wet. Let's give it a second. You know, I'm going to grab something to wipe it off with. Dry it faster. Hopefully the Lysol doesn't fuck with the finish. But if it does, the only two spots we put it on were where we're going to be putting the hook and loop anyway. So it won't be visible. Alright, so that's pretty dry. So, now we're going to take one thing in this hook and loop, i got to decide which side I want to uh, stick to the board itself. I think I want the loop side on the board. Just, you want to just peel this apart for a second and double check which side you got. Actually, we can, we can just separate this entirely because we're going to attach the hook side to the pedal separate. So yeah, we cleaned our surface, so now you're just gonna peel this off. Try not to touch the sticky part at all. You're gonna have to touch at least one little corner of it, but try not to touch more than that. Oh hey, the glue on this is actually pretty strong. I am impressed. Obviously we want the strongest seal we can get. And this just happens to be measured pretty much perfectly to fit the board. So I'm just going to stick that down there, start in the middle, move towards the edge, just make sure that it's really on there good. And then we're going to do the same on the bottom, 
detach these, leave the hook over here for the pedals. Peel this baby off. Oh, see, now I got crap on the board from ripping apart the hook and loop. Again, it's cut to length for the board. Start the middle as much as you can. It is really sticky, so it might be a little difficult. And just kind of push out towards the edges, make sure it's really on there. All right, so now it's time to actually put the pedals on the board. Uh, let's talk about the order in which we're going to do this. So, obviously, general signal flow on any board is right to left. So, the guitar input's over here and just moves along the chain. So, the first thing we want on there is gonna be our tuner, and the reason for that is that when we flip it on, it mutes the whole channel, so we don't want anything before it. We just want that to just mute everything. So we'll put that in first, and you want to look how it's going to line up. And we also want to get this as close to the edge as we possibly can. So yeah, we just want to look how it's going to line up on the hook and loop. So as you can see, it's like only partially on each of these. So I'm just going to put like half a sliver on each end of this pedal. So let's just turn that upside down for a second. I'll take this. I'm gonna cut this to length for in between these rubber feet. I don't really want it to be on the rubber feet, so. Okay, now that's cut. I'm gonna put that on. really stuck. Do the same for the other side. Right, so that's good and stuck. I'm going to give it a minute for it to adhere completely before I stick it onto the actual board. But yeah, that's ready to go. And we're pretty much just going to do the same for all the other pedals. Uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of this pad. There's padding on the back of this pedal. Not really sure why, but it's there. Uh, I think I'm gonna try and get that off. So we have the uh, just the Velcro there. Excuse me, just the hook and loop there. Well, the first one came off easy. <laughs> Yeah, we're just gonna do the same thing on this one. Cut this to size. Again, you just wanna look how it's gonna line up. So you just wanna, on this one we want it all the way towards the top. Now for the bottom one, because it has the little door there to get into this, to get to the battery compartment, we don't really wanna cover that all the way, so we're probably going to have to cut the velcro, the hook and loop down. Oh no, that'll be fine. Yeah, we don't want it to like overlap the door and onto the rest of the pedal. Alright, so yeah, we're going to put the hook and loop on all of them before we put it together because it'll make our lives way easier putting them on the board and running the cables if we can kind of cable them up before we attach them. This one's a big boy, but it should fit pretty much the same. So again, we're just gonna stick some Velcro right there in between the edge. Some hook and loop, I'm sorry, I'm sorry guys. And look, we got a ton of this left over. So if we wanted to so you put some on other pedals at any point to swap out with these pedals, but we want to leave hook and loop on all of them so we can swap them out anytime we want. Won't be a problem because there's going to be a ton of extra stuff. All 
All right, so we got all that done. Now let's try and wire a couple of these together, like I said, before we attach them to the board. See, so obviously the pedals can only get so close because of things like that. So we want to get this as close to the edge as we possibly can. And then get this one as close to that one as we possibly can. And this is why we're attaching the cable before we attach the pedal. Because if we tried to do the cabling after, we'd never be able to get this in there into that space to get it wired. So, yeah, those are pretty on there. You can see I'm picking up the whole board with them. I wouldn't, like, shake it around by that, but it's still pretty solid. All right, so these ones are weird. These get routed on the top. Have to be a little creative with the cabling. It's gonna kind of twist around weird and might have a little bit of cable management issues as a result. But we'll figure it out. Actually, that kind of tucks over there. All right, it twirls around a little bit and tucks off to the side here. So it's not too bad. Again, we want to get these as close as we can. I was messing with this a little earlier, and I realized because these are two tops, what's actually the easiest way to do this is to route this cable under inside this little hole here. It's the easiest way to do that, because if we don't do that, then we're going to have the cable sticking straight up. So we're going to do it this way instead, and hopefully, hopefully, I can get it to work. I'm going to have to take this pedal off for a second just to get the plug in it. Tuck that as close as we can. And we'll plug this in. We get that as close as we can. There, see there's even a little extra room off to the side here. We could maybe fit like a mini pedal or have like a really thin pedal hanging off the edge a little. But yeah, so that's the basis of it. But now we got to connect the power. So, on the power supply, you guys can see that we got those little holes. This is the power input, and then the other four are the power outputs. So, we're just going to attach the cables to that and run them out through these holes up to the top of the pedals. Figuring out the best way to do that will be interesting. Okay, the power supply is still a little loose. That is not good. Let's tighten that down a little more. Yeah, that should be good. Yeah, then we just route this power cable wherever we can. And looks like we're going to have a lot of extra cable. Alright, there's a problem I didn't think about. Alright, we're just, yeah, we're just going to have to move this pedal farther left because, if you guys saw, because it was over here, the jack was up here covering the power input, so yeah, we're just going to have to move this farther down and that way we can plug this right in. Alright, and yeah, we're going to have some extra cabling on the bottom, which we'll have to figure out something to do with it, which hopefully it won't be too big of an issue, but the important thing right now is getting everything connected and then we can worry about cleaning it up. Yeah, so while I'm doing this, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the pedal board itself. The board was pretty cheap. Obviously, it's kind of small, but it was cheap. It got here fast and it works well. I'm surprised at the strength of the hook and loop. That's good. So. The only thing I'll have to figure out here is cable management, and I think that shouldn't be too much of a problem. I think I have some little hook and loop cable ties that I'll probably use to like tie these all together tighter and tuck them in between the pedals and whatever else. I think by the end it'll look alright. Uh, I'm almost out of time on the camera, so 
You may not see me grab the little cable ties and attach those, but I'm going to try and be quick. Oh yeah, I got a whole bunch of little hook and loop ties. I knew these would come in handy. And yeah, these we're just going to bunch up the best we can and wrap this around them. I'm going to loop three, these through. There's a space in the boards here. I'm going to try and attach them to that. I am a stickler about cable management. There we go. Nice and tidy. These ones actually aren't too bad. I'm just going to kind of attach them to the audio cables. Alright, and let's see what it looks like under. Yeah, not bad. Cable hanging down a little bit, but not much. I'm pretty happy with this. Now I, all I gotta do really is attach the uh, the final power cable, which will take literally a millisecond. Not a millisecond, but like a very short period of time. I think you guys get what I'm saying. Figure out how to attach that to the bottom at some point. But yeah, I am pretty happy with how this little thing turned out. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I had a lot of fun building that. Uh, yeah, I haven't really used a pedal board in a long time because for most of my recent bands, I've just been the bassist. And as a bassist, I literally only use one pedal. So now that I'm playing guitar in the band I'm currently in, I needed a few more things. And it's just way easier to keep it all tidy on a board than try and connect a bunch of individual pedals together and keep track of all the cables and everything. And just a nightmare. So this just made it easier. Uh, I really like the Gator pedal board. It's really simple to use. It has the hardware already attached to connect your power supply on the bottom, which is cool. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you found it helpful, uh, leave me a comment. Tell me what your favorite part was of the video. If you guys could hit that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.